Well, what is going on guys and welcome into the video. So there is a lot going on in Tesla land these days and unfortunately, none of it seems to be positive. I mean, we have the Elon Twitter drama that seems to never end. Then we have Elon battling with his own employees and then playing politics, it may seem. And if that drama wasn't enough, there are actual production issues as well, the potential cutting of Tesla staff and a super bad feeling about the economy overall. All of this will have a major effect on Tesla's stock price. So we have a ton to talk about today, so let's get started right after you gently tap that like button, and also after you consider subscribing too. It's super easy to do and it's free. And we actually cannot start until you do both. I mean, seriously guys, YouTube tells on you if you don't. Okay, and maybe I made that part up. So let's talk about the Twitter drama just briefly as I know it's been covered before, but the longer this drags out, the more scrutiny it brings to what he is doing. Now on its own, it's just a sideshow to me, but with everything else going on, it will get viewed as a distraction. And I agree, I don't think it's a distraction at all. I mean, if he can start all these other great companies and still take Tesla at a record after record, why is this suddenly too much for him? I mean, he is better at managing his time than anyone and putting people in place to maximize what he needs to do. But I also can't disagree that it's turned into a bit of a mess at this stage, so it's going to be viewed as a distraction and a big negative by Wall Street and large investors. If this was the only thing going on, it wouldn't be much, but unfortunately there is much, much more that's going on. You also have Elon demanding that all employees return to work or essentially get out of the company. Anyone who wishes to do remote work must be in the office for a minimum, and I mean minimum, of 40 hours per week or depart Tesla. This is less than we ask our factory workers, Musk wrote, adding that the office must be the employee's primary workplace where the other workers they regularly interact with are based, not a remote branch office unrelated to the job duties. Musk said he would personally review any requests for exemption from the policy, but that for the most part, if you don't show up, we will assume you have resigned. That is strong, my friends, and leaves no room for interpretation and this has elicited strong responses on both sides of the coin. I mean, we had a great debate in my private group about this when it came out, with great points being made on all sides, for and against, you know, teleworking and all that sort of stuff. There are situations where it makes perfect sense, and it's actually better for the business and the employees to work from home, and there are situations where the opposite is completely true, and it makes sense to be in the office. And that is better for the company and the employees and all that good stuff. I actually think there is more to this, and Elon is too smart to not have found inefficiencies in certain areas of his business, and he is trying to eliminate them. I mean, maybe he's just trying to maintain the kind of all-in culture that Tesla has built and made it so successful, and he is not about to let it turn into a bloated corporate giant, you know, one of those type companies. Maybe it's both or something else altogether, but there is more there than just, I don't like you guys working from home. Unfortunately, it does mean there will be some talent that leaves, and how much is yet to be determined, but there will be some that leave. On the flip side, Tesla is one of the most desirable places to work in the world, so filling in those gaps should not be a problem if they even want to fill them all, and we will discuss that here in just a second if they even want to fill them or not. So this is probably going to be a short-term issue that doesn't affect much, and I really think much of this would have been nothing more than just kind of a footnote if, you know, Elon wouldn't have come so aggressive and so strong with it, but you guys know that is not how he rolls at all. He's going to be Elon. And we also had Elon wade into politics as well. And again, that is something that large investors just don't like to hear. I mean, it's not like they care about which party he chooses to support. And as a matter of fact, it's very common for wealthy folks and CEOs and Wall Street types to donate to both parties, despite the fact that they only vote one way only. They do this simply because, let's be honest, why not have whoever is in office at whatever level be your friend because our system's not corrupt at all, right? I mean, no, no way. So they vote for one, but give to both. And that basically is good old American politics at its finest. But large investors don't like it when you are outspoken to the side that you support. And you guys know, I don't care one bit about politics at all. I don't pay any attention to it. I didn't pay any attention to anything Elon said about it or that anybody else says about it. And I'm not about to start caring now. But I do know that big money doesn't like for any executive to be outspoken one way or the other, as you could potentially alienate 50% of your potential customers. And if you don't think politics isn't divisive enough here in the US to get people to boycott your product or look for alternatives or whatever based upon your political views, you are not paying attention at all. But for now, I don't think this keeps folks from buying a Tesla. It's not reached that level yet, but it won't stop Wall Street from using it as a reason to keep on hating on Tesla. So that does not have a material effect on Tesla's performance, 
but let's get into the juicy stuff that does have a direct impact on Tesla's performance. First, we had Shanghai lockdowns that cost Tesla almost a month of production, and this will hurt the bottom line. There is no way around it. Now, I know he has pulled a rabbit out of the hat multiple times, but I just don't think this is one Tesla can overcome for this quarter, especially given how much they rely on the China factory for deliveries until the other factories start to ramp up and kind of get all the way back to full capacity. Now, this is all completely out of Tesla's control, but that doesn't mean the stock price will not get punished in the short term when the numbers are posted for the quarter. Long term, I don't really see this as a concern at all, given that the Chinese government is finally revisiting the zero tolerance policy. But short term, if deliveries come up short, which I suspect they will, it will cause pain for the shareholders. Then we have Tesla looking to cut 10% of its workforce because Elon has a super bad feeling about the economy. Now, if I'm being honest here, with Tesla's demand being so high, even a complete global recession might only have demand slow to a point where you don't have to wait a year before you get your car that you ordered, but instead you get it in a couple of months. If anything, this announcement made me wonder if this is more of a message to go along with the earlier point of return to office or leave. He knows some will not return and take other jobs, and this may be another signal to get them to leave if they think they're on the chopping block anyways and probably going to lose their jobs. We know it's not going to be the factory workers that are part of that 10%. As Elon stated, it was 10% of the salary jobs, which many of those could be done from home, unlike the factory workers. Obviously, that's just my guess, and anybody trying to tell you what is actually going on with Elon is just kind of guessing because he does play games like this or he's just thinking five steps ahead on a plan that we don't even know about yet and hasn't even been announced. All those are plausible in my mind for sure, but unfortunately, Wall Street is going to take it as Tesla is having weak demand, even though I just don't see that being the case at all. But without more clarity, this is going to weigh on the stock heavily as it will be viewed as a slowdown in demand. And I'm sure Gordon Johnson will be on TV soon saying, I told you so, Tesla's a fraud and all that crap like that. So what does this mean for the stock itself? Well, in this market, who basically knows, right? I mean, negative news is positive, positive news is negative, and what is a concern one day is a magically a catalyst the next day. Welcome to investing, my friend. This is exactly why short-term trading is really hard and being a market timer is impossible. So I basically prepare for all scenarios, but if I had to guess for entertainment purposes only, I would say this all means some short-term pain for the stock. I mean, if deliveries are bad, and the numbers finally miss after like two years of crushing earnings, expect the stock to get punished. And with all the drama going on, don't be surprised if we don't see big money jumping in on those dips if they come. But to me, if it plays out this way and that all happens, it is just another golden opportunity to add shares. I mean, I love buying them in the low 600s a few weeks ago, and I will happily buy there again or at 500 or wherever the heck it goes, because that is all well below my valuation and price target for Tesla, and you guys know I love discounts. And if you don't know how to get a price target for Tesla, how to do a valuation and want a step-by-step -step process for doing that, building wealth, and you want direct access to me and a ton more, remember to check out the pinned comment to become a member and at least look at everything you get with that. And click this video right here for eight extreme value stocks and click here for exactly what I'm doing to make huge money in this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.